Hi, Ericibo, Ericibo.com. And today, after almost six months with my uh, Hasselblad 907X uh, with the CFV uh, 250C uh, digital back, uh, I can give you my uh, opinion about this camera. I actually reviewed it uh, about a year ago. I'll leave you the link here. But the camera was lent to me for a few days and this one is mine. So I'm going to give you uh, the pro, the cons, what I like, what I don't like, all in details about this. So let's start. Well, first of all, I've got this camera with the grip, the optional grip uh, that gives a few options, uh, things that are a side of uh, holding it, okay? Uh, this is a medium format camera. I'm not going to give all the specs because for that I already did a, a review, okay? And uh, I've got the 45 millimeter f4, which is the small, smallest lens for this and also the cheapest one. So this is the uh, cheapest combo when you have uh, this camera with this lens, okay? Obviously, you have more lenses that are uh, possible, okay? And uh, this is a medium format. This is the smallest medium format uh, on the market. As you can say, with that grip, it's really, really small, as you can see. And uh, I would say what I really love is the look. The look is retro look. It looks like a Hasselblad 500 series or 200 series. So this uh, film uh, Hasselblad, really a nice camera in my opinion. So I'm going to tell you uh, what I like, what I don't really like, what I think is great, what is not that great. So in case you would be interested, you can uh, make your own opinion, okay? So let's carry on. First, if we look at uh, the, the aspect of the camera, it has this retro look that is, I think is really, really nice. Really looks like, uh, I would say a super wide Hasselblad, not the 500 because 500 is a bit longer, okay? But I think the look is really nice, really retro. I really love it. Not everyone will like it, okay? But in my case, I really love it. What I like also is the screen. The screen has a plus and a minus, which is uh, pro and cons. The plus, uh, the pro is you can put it uh, 90 degrees, so you can actually uh, make a waist level uh, picture, okay? So that's fine. So if you want to have the same uh, sensation as with a, a, a Hassel, film Hasselblad that doesn't have a prism on it, that's with, that is great. But on the other hand, if it's really sunny, uh, here you don't have uh, a way to really see the screen really well. It, get, it gets a lot of reflection and sometimes it's hard to see. There is an optional viewfinder, but it doesn't cover all the focal lengths. So, well, so the feeling is great, but in some situation, it may be hard to see the screen. So depends the kind of picture you make, that may be a problem, okay? I really like the minimalist look, just a few buttons. The menu is completely touchable. You really access quickly, that's nice. If you look at it, it's really so simple. Here you have a door with a battery and, a, and, and also uh, the, the, the SD cards. So when you uh, love this kind of format, you will love it. If you're not used to it, depends on you. But in my opinion, this is a great look, a great feeling, great sensation. But I understand not everyone will agree on that. But uh, yeah, for me, that part is brilliant. And the weight is fine. Yeah, it's not that light, but the weight is fine, okay? That, that's not too heavy, okay? One thing that is really fantastic is that you can synchronize your flash at every speed. Uh, the shutter is in the lens. This is a leaf shutter. It means you can synchronize at flash at any speed. Uh, this lens uh, goes up to one two thousandths of a second, which is not really high, but that's, I think that's fine. If you look at the 90 millimeter 2.5, uh, that is not available yet, but it, it's been announced and presented, okay? Uh, you can synchronize up to one four thousandths of a second. So if you like to make pictures outdoor, and with flash and you can uh, uh, control the ambient light uh, via speed, that's fantastic. But on the other hand, surprisingly, they have not thought any place where you could put your uh, trigger, which is a bit stupid, honestly, because uh, some people put a Velcro and put, put the trigger on the camera. Others have uh, uh, created a 3D printed uh, a cold shoe, the place where the viewfinder would go and uh, the optional viewfinder and they place it there, okay? So that sounds okay, but honestly, I don't know why they didn't think of uh, some optional uh, accessory to be able to place a trigger because uh, I think this camera is really great to use with a flash, a flash uh, outdoor and uh, you want to control the ambient light via speed, you need a trigger somewhere to uh, trigger your flash, okay? That's the positive point is the uh, flash synchro and the negative is 
no space for uh, placing the trigger, okay? Many people, when they see a camera uh, of that kind of prices or that kind of quality, they, th they think or they say, yeah, with that kind of camera, it's impossible to miss a picture. Well, it's really easy to miss a picture with this camera for two reasons. First, uh, something that I cannot understand, Mr. Hasselblad, you don't have the information, you, uh, the help you may have on mirrorless camera to know if your exposure is right. Yeah, you have the, the small bar, but you don't have uh, the highlights warning. You get them once a the picture is taken. The histogram, you get it once the picture is taken. So uh, this kind of information we want before uh, making the picture. I don't know why this, this is this way, but it means that uh, if you don't know how to expose properly, you don't know how to evaluate light or uh, properly measure, then that may be a problem. You think the picture is going to be fine and that's not. It's true that uh, the, the, the way you see the picture on the, uh, on the screen may uh, be more uh, brighter or less bright depending on the exposure, but that's not precise. So the, the truth, you get it once the picture is made. This is when you see the warning, highlight warning, histogram or this, not beforehand. Okay, so that's a problem. So one big reason you can miss a picture, although this is an expensive camera. Second, the autofocus. The autofocus is really bad, really slow. Uh, in bright light, that's okay. Uh, this is a contrast detect autofocus, but if you have like a uniform color, like a sky, blue sky, really hard to focus. And if it's dark, really hard to focus also. This is a single uh, uh, autofocus, it's not continuous autofocus. So if you wanted to make, I don't even speak about action photography, but you make uh, something like uh, fashion photography and the person is moving a bit, that may be really difficult and easy to miss a picture. So yes, it's not because it's an expensive camera that it does the job for you. You still need to know really how to expose and really know how to focus or manually or to make sure how to focus properly, okay? But that's not easy. Something that sounds really stupid to me is uh, you do have some uh, composition help. You have the grid here in third, for example. Here I can have uh, the, uh, the, fo the, the focus distance. It will tell me how far it is focused. Here I can have the bubble level to know if it's horizontal, vertical or this. And here I've got the clean screen, okay? But I cannot have all three at the same time. Why cannot, can, can I have uh, the bubble level at the same time the grid, at the same time the uh, focusing distance? This is absurd, this nonsense. Why should I choose just one of them? I would like to have all this information at the same time to help me compose uh, a frame and all this. So I think this is stupid, honestly. Okay, a negative point, well, it depends on what you do. This is not a weather sealed camera. Uh, it's a bit, uh, some uh, drop of rain today, but that's okay, I think. Okay, so if your idea was to make picture uh, on the seaside or really uh, close to the sea with the wind and dust and water, all this, Forget it, this is not the camera you should use. That would be a serious problem, okay? So you need to know that. Other negative point, the battery life. Battery life is ridiculous. It's really, uh, it flies so fast. So I think you always need two or three batteries. Maybe some people need four, okay? And the charger is not included. You can charge via the USB port that is here, okay? USB-C, okay? But uh, if you want the optional charger, you have to pay extra for it and it's not cheap, okay? So uh, take this into account. Battery life, and it's not weather sealed. So I've got this grip. I think this is really useful because this camera is not stabilized. So uh, this is really useful to be more steady. And also because here, if you want to change, you move the uh, focusing point, you need to move it on the screen with your finger. And here you have a small joystick for that. Here you have some extra button that are uh, noise, uh, the play button, uh, change from autofocus to manual focus, and. Uh, you have access to menu and you can change one of the button as a function button here. And here you have the trigger here and here you have a wheel uh, for the speed and here for the aperture. Something I do not understand, why can't you change uh, invert aperture with speed? On all my cameras, I like to have the aperture at the back and the speed on the front. And this one is all the way around and there's no way to change it. I think this is stupid, okay? But still, I think, Unless you always work on a tripod, actually here I've got the tripod plate here. Uh, this, uh, this grip is really useful to be a lot more steady and move easily your, uh, your focusing point. I think this is uh, it's an expensive accessory, but I think it's really useful, really recommendable, okay? Another negative point, uh, which is really nice, but is risky. 
Uh, to separate the digital back from the 907 uh, small body here, you just have this uh, slide, uh, you slide it to the side button here, and some people are getting their camera out of the bag, they accidentally move it, and the bag fell on the floor. So that's a big problem. So there is no more safety than this. And I think maybe it's a bit light, okay, a bit uh, little, okay. I've seen some people, they use a third party uh, cage, they put the whole lot in a cage, to, uh, say, to, to be safe, okay? But really, take care with that. It's easy to move this and then uh, the uh, back would be separated, okay? So you could say, uh, well, you've said many uh, negative points, so why would you uh, choose that kind of camera? Uh, why are you happy about this camera? Uh, well, because of image quality. The image quality is amazing. Many people, when we speak about image quality, they think about colors. Some people will say, I like Fujifilm colors, I like uh, Nikon colors, I like Canon colors, Sony colors, whatever, okay? With Hasselblad, you don't think this way. What I like is not colors by Hasselblad. What I like is what I see. I want the color to be as real as possible, as exact as possible. And this is where Hasselblad is the king. Uh, you don't have uh, specially different colors or things that are strange. Actually, you don't have Adobe RGB, you don't have sRGB, you have Hasselblad system, okay? So uh, you really get the right colors and then after you can always saturate if you want, desaturate if you want, uh, push some colors more than others. You can work on it in post-production, but at least you know where you start from. And I really love this uh, from Hasselblad that the colors are exact, okay? Obviously, if you don't like the format of this camera, you have uh, its sister, which is the X1D uh, Mark II. Uh, that has the same sensor. And actually, this exact, it is exactly the same sensor as the JFX uh, uh, 50S, 50 and 50R by Fujifilm, except on the uh, 50 series on JFX, you use it 14 bit and this is 16 bit. And if you want uh, even more resolution than this, you have the X2D that is 100 uh, megapixel with 16 bit, the same sensor as the JFX uh, 100S by uh, Fujifilm, also in 16 bit and also 100. Uh, uh, a megapixel, but the colors by Hasselblad are colors by Hasselblad. So I, I really did not believe that much in this until I tried it. And I'm so amazed by the result I get with this camera. The colors are incredible. And then it's really important that when you're going to develop your RAW file, you could use Lightroom by Adobe if you want. You cannot use Capture One because uh, Capture One is made by Phase One, which is competition of Hasselblad, and it's not compatible. But I recommend you use Focus, which is the, the software they have for the Hasselblad. This is really good. It takes a bit of time to learn, but that's not really complicated. You can work in layers, all this. It's really nice, uh, areas, all this. That works fine. And it's also a lot better to develop your role. In highlight, you get at least one step better uh, uh, recovery. In, low, in, in uh, shadows, a lot more also. And actually, uh, the, the, the way you recover shadows with this camera is just stunning. You don't really get that much noise. It's really incredible. The image quality is the massive point for this. Obviously, if your idea is just published on social networks, is it worth spending so much money for social networks? You do see some difference, okay? But is it worth it? Well, probably not, okay? It depends on the pleasure you want, the money you want to spend to get the pleasure of using the camera. Uh, if you never print your picture, never publish in large format, but, well, I'm not sure, okay? But uh, the quality is stunning, okay? I really love it. So, for me, this is the big point, image quality. Let's speak about this lens. This is the 45mm uh, P, there is also a 45mm 3.5, this one opens at f4. This lens is the cheapest lens Hasselblad has, it's about 1200 euros which is really, really cheap for the, the quality it gives. I think this is, uh, it's like a, a, a click bite or a, a lens bite, I think. They put it that cheap, that uh, affordable uh, to attract people to their system. But the quality is stunning. From corner to corner, this is so sharp. So it's really incredible, this lens, okay? So uh, I really recommend you have it uh, in your bag if you have a Hasselblad. Obviously, you can have more lenses, there is uh, uh, the 35 millimeter, uh, the 45 millimeter uh, 3.5. Uh, this is the equivalent of a 36 millimeter full frame. I know that some people think that f4 is not that luminous, 
But take into account that uh, on f uh, medium format, uh, the, sh the depth of field is really shallow and sometimes it's really too shallow for me. I know they have an 80 millimeter 1.9, I think, but still it's too shallow for me. So for me, F4, this is really fine, really good. And this lens is so good. So if you get into a Hasselblad system, you need to have this lens. Get more if you want, but this one you need it, okay? I would say the only uh, problem that it has you cannot have a sunshade, they don't have any sunshade for it, okay? Uh, you could have another screw-on sunshade if you want from a third party. But that, that's surprising. But still, I think it uh, behaves really well uh, in many uh, light situations. So I didn't really miss a sunshade on it. But maybe it would be nice to have it, okay? But, but really, impressive lens. I really recommend it. Really sharp, really, really good. I would love to have a 90 millimeter too uh, for portrait, okay? So just with this lens already, I have a lot of fun. Really recommendable. So my conclusion. Well, after six months, do I regret buying this camera? Absolutely not. Obviously, this is not a camera for everybody. I don't even speak about the price. I speak about the feeling, the way to use it, all this. But in my case, I really love it. That slows me down. Uh, that obliges me to think about my picture. The fact that the autofocus is lousy, the fact that you don't have all the information you would like, all the fancy information you get from a, a, a mirrorless camera for the exposure, you, you, you do get it on a, the same as a reflex camera in this way, okay? But uh, like uh, the uh, uh, histogram beforehand and the light, uh, highlight warning beforehand, you don't get them. That obliges you to work really slower, think, check, uh, work better on your picture really similar to a film camera. I really love it. Uh, I wish I had used it a bit more with my uh, film uh, Hasselblad. I will probably do more. I don't have much time to do it. But really, I love the feeling. I love uh, when you hold the camera. It's a different story. It's a different feeling. It's really something so special to me that I really relax when I make pictures with this camera. Obviously, if I had to make fast picture. I would probably not be relaxed, but really nervous because of the, how slow it is, okay? But for the way I make this picture with this camera, I just love it. So I think this camera is completely recommendable. Uh, many people who do portraits, they would probably love it because uh, you put it waist level. Obviously, you could take any camera and uh, if you can lift the, the screen, do it also waist level. But this way, you have the large screen, you have uh, eye, contact, eye contact with the person, you make a portrait. and the resolution is great, the details are great. The feeling is so nice to hold a camera like this. I really love it. So I don't regret at all this camera. I want to use it even more. And uh, yeah, for me, this is a camera I really recommend. It's really a special camera. This is not for everyone. Not everyone will like to hold a camera like this. Uh, some people will get annoyed because uh, of the point I said, I wish Hasselblad fixed them. I don't think they will, because they are really slow fixing things. I think they're just happy with the way it is, and they will leave it this way, okay? But uh, still, as it is, it is a great camera for me. Maybe not for you, but for me, it is a great camera. So, uh, honestly, if you really realize the pro and cons, and you uh, evaluate what's good for you, uh, if you feel it's a good camera, you will probably love it for you, okay? So, thank you so much for watching the video. If you feel it mentions other people, Please share it on social networks. If you have not done it yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. So button down here is a small bell. If you click on the bell, get notified when I upload a new video. My website, ericgibo.com. If you have any question, you can leave a comment below. Also leave you links of my on Amazon, links of everything I reviewed by Kev Concepts, Sandmark and Flashes by Westcott, and some more affiliated links, and also a link to my PayPal account in case you wanted to make a donation. So please take care of yourself and see you soon. Bye.